Good evening and welcome back to Follow Me Well Legends podcast. It's Tuesday evening. I'm Lindsay Glenn and beside me Stan Gordon and our podcast features the greatest ever Rangers legends as our special guests, Rangers supporters, clubs and bars from all around the world. We'd like to thank our amazing sponsors who are on board with us supporting us this season. The Gallant Pioneer in Blackpool, the Gat Craig Pub, VIP Ices, Cube Glass, Country Carpets, Avia Signs, Croft Construction, Impact Signs, Ernock Builders and EK Blind and Shutters. Please check out all of their social media pages and websites shown on the screen. Remember, if you're on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe to our show. If you're on any of our social media platforms, remember to like, comment and share, share, share. Also get your questions in early tonight. We give a very, very warm welcome sorry, to one of our sponsors of the show, Mr. Gary Thorne from Cube Glass. And ladies and gents, also, I am absolutely honoured to announce we have on the show tonight one of the most admired and respected coaches ever to grace Scottish football, Mr. Archie Knox. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, Good Archie. Garrett. How are you doing? Yeah. Welcome to the show. Uh, if we're going to start off with the quiz first uh, tonight. So the two questions uh, for the quiz, and what it will be, it will be two tickets for the Barcelona Day in the famous Stonefield Tavern on the 3rd of December. So who gets the two questions right first and gets them up on the screen, I'll get two tickets for a fantastic day in the pub. Now, the, the, the two questions are going to be, who, this is a double dunter, who was the first team that Archie ever managed and he played for twice? And what was Archie's first game under Walter Smith? And uh, once you get the, the, the questions in, uh, we'll get the two tickets to them. Okay, so we'll start with yourself, Archie. 1980, he became assistant manager to Sir Alec Ferguson. Uh, what kind of guy was Alec? Straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> a spade was a spade, there's no doubt about it. And uh, there was never any sort of indecision with Alec, you know. And if he made the decision, then that was the end of it. He could change it, yeah, but you were not allowed to interfere or anything like that because... Uh, I can remember once up at Aberdeen where uh, we'd picked the team. We used to get, be in a room next to the dressing room. We called Terry Scott, if you can remember Terry Scott, yeah. who was uh, the, the main man at Aberdeen, really, and in his room. So he'd picked the team and uh, we'd, go into, we'd go into the dressing room um, just, just after it. And he starts to announce the team. And I'm saying, that's not the team he's... That's not the team that he was uh, talking about just two minutes ago. So we got back into Ted's room and I said, well, I'm there. And of course, when you questioned Alec then, it was, what do you mean? I says, well, you had three changes in that bloody team uh, to what you had said when we were in, uh, in uh, discussing it. No, I didn't. He says, I only had two. I says, look, you had three and I named the three and all the rest of it. I says, but not only that, Drew Jarvie, who was in the team, he wasn't even on the bench. <laughs> he says, well, go and tell one of the young boys he's no playing. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get a hold of one of the young boys that was a, named as a sub and told him uh, that he wasn't playing. But that was just right, right out of the blue. Oh, right well, out of the blue. I yeah, mind you telling us a story about... Uh, he sent you to, to Liverpool. You were playing Liverpool and it was at the Cup Winners' Cup. I was at the European Cup European and he sent you aye. day about a scouting aye. and you met you bit uh, Bill Shankly. Well, I went down on the Wednesday night uh, to watch Liverpool against Middlesbrough and uh, the, the League Cup, as it was known then. And um, I go down, so we're <clears throat> in the boardroom and that at half time. And of course, Bill Shankly wasn't the, wasn't the manager at that particular time. And Alex said to me, he says, you ever met Bill Shankly? Now, he was somebody you were in total awe of. You know, you heard the stories. And I I used to go, I had a tape that I would play to the young boys if we were in the minibus or going to training or stuff like that. And it was absolutely brilliant. But anyway, then uh, he, I says, no, I've never, I've never met, I've never met Mr. Shackley. He says, come on, we'll go across and meet him. And uh, we'll go across and meet him and... Uh, his first words, hi son, he says, you're down to see our team and uh, I, Mr Shankly, just down to sort of see what happens and 
you know, uh, run a rule over the team and all the rest of it. Uh, in actual fact, I'm like what I'm saying the new. I didn't know what to say to him. Anyway, we get that over and done with, and uh, and they win one nothing against uh, Middlesbrough. So we'll go back. I go back on the Saturday. Alex got the the first team before the Wednesday night's game. So I go back down to Anfield myself and uh, same routine, go into the the into the, the, the boardroom and stuff like that. So I'm standing and I'm uh, having a cup of tea at uh, half time and stuff. And um, he comes across and he says, I son, they were playing Ipswich this time in the league and Ipswich were, you know, equal top of the league with them at that particular time. And he says, aye, son, he says, you're down to watch our team again. And, of course, you're saying, what do you say to Bill Shankly? Alex, no, there. So I said, I down to see uh, the team again, Mr Shankly, and see if there's any changes in the team and see uh, what they're doing with free kicks and just all the stuff that you would come out with to people, but no to Bill Shankly. And he stopped me in my tracks and he says, aye, son, he says, they've all tried that. <laughs> so I put my notebook in my pocket, right? Because the only I was sitting, there was me, there was a space or somebody else, and then Bill Shankly, where we were sitting. I never took my notebook out the fall of the second half. <laughs> I just watched the game. <laughs> so that was uh, that was how I met Bill Shankly. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, Gary, I'll come to yourself. Um, do you want to tell us a wee bit about Cube Glass? What sort of stuff you used to do? If I have to. Obviously, it's glass. <laughs> I'm more enjoying the stories that Mr. Knox is telling us. Um, we, uh, we manufacture aluminium windows and doors and cut more in for pretty much everything. Domestic, commercial premises, shop fronts, all that type of stuff. Schools. We're going 10 years. This is our 10-year anniversary. Do you do any stuff for Rangers or anything like that? We do. We're in the, the midst of doing the, the Blue Sky Lounge at the moment. So we're, we're probably about 75% finished, <clears throat> which is a full-length screen, full length of what used to be the, the Govan stand, the Sandy Jardin stand, and that's going to allow people to be in the lounge but also come out into the stand and sit at the back of the stand there. Brilliant. So nearly nearly finished that. That's great. And I hear also that you are a sponsor at Rangers as well. We are, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we, we do the kind of usual sponsorship of this digi boards and that type of thing, but we also sponsor the Partners Lounge. Right. We did that during COVID. We, um, I don't know if I can say this, we actually quite a good COVID period because we were <laughs> we were working constantly through it. So we went to the club and said, look, how can we help? Rather than the club coming to us. And at that stage, there were a few ideas. And one of them was, look, we really need to do something for the partners. So we're considering refurbishing an area within the stand. Could you help us with that? So we said, yep. So we struck a three-year deal. We've extended that by an extra year this year. Fantastic. So it's now a four-year sponsorship. That's amazing, isn't it? That's oh, brilliant. Just, uh, they try to sneak into the Thorns <laughs> again. Like, you know, we used to live there. <laughs> But, uh, I think it was yourself that was telling us that <clears throat> where they're doing that. No, no, the Sandy Jardin stand actually. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're doing all that up. It's going to be the Blue Sky Lounge in it. Yeah. And see, when they took that bit away for you, you come out and you can sit at the front now. The seats were already there for years, years ago. And when they opened it up again, that these seats originally were there. Was that right? Uh, I think the concrete. I think the concrete and all that there. And the, the, there was placings there, waiting for seats to be put in. But they obviously must. Some must have changed their mind. Aye. And they went for what became their girl suite up there. Because that used, if I remember, it, that, you were enclosed in that, weren't you? You had your dinner and then you, you sat and you had the screens there, didn't you? Aye, we, so, were, we were in there for a season, <clears> but I think like most people would agree when you're getting the atmosphere pumped in through speakers. It's, it's not, the, not same. the same. No. You, don't, you, don't feel this, you don't feel quite the same connection with the, the fans, apart from the team. You don't feel any kind of connection. Aye. And saying that right enough, it's no bad in the winter when you don't need to get side. Nah, that's one plus point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, true. Right. So uh, on you go. All you right, sorry. Fine, on you go. Yeah, uh, Archie. He became manager at Dundee, nineteen eighty-three. Uh, I was born, by the way. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Uh, myself and me Willie try and keep that out. <laughs> myself and me Willie said we're in uh, Bombers class at school. Bombers my best man. I know you signed Bomber. What, what type of player did you find Bomber? Oh, fantastic player. But the signing of Bomber, that that uh, I mean, I'd watched him two or three times playing for Hamilton and stuff like that. And I'm saying he's a tough boy, Bomber. You know, he can play, you know, a double centre half, or he can play left back, he could play you know, left midfield. He could play a number of positions, which suited me fine because when you were at Dundee in that 
you had to have a few players like that that could fill in in any any, any position if you like. I mean, if you look at Milner, uh, well, Liverpool now, same thing. Bomber, yeah. Bomber was a, Bomber was a similar type of person, you know, could play anywhere. But uh, I remember signing him, and if, of course he comes for his medical up at Dundee, and you didn't quite have the same sort of rigmarole as they go through now, where you know every they check absolutely everything. But Bomber had always <clears throat> cartilages out, the four cartilages out, two in each knee. And uh, I can remember uh, saying to Eric Ferguson, who's my physio, uh, and I said to Eric, I says, Eric, we can't, we can't take, we can't take him. And no, uh, sorry, Eric said to me, he says, he can't take him. He's got all his cartilages out. I says, Eric, I says, we're taking him. Come what may, I says, we could be out. If we don't take them, so never mind these cartridges. We'll take the chance, and we took the chance with, with John Brown, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely phenomenal uh, player for Dundee and a phenomenal player for for uh, Rangers. Well, I know, I know that uh, what you're saying there. He went for a medical, didn't he? And, and it hurts before right. he went to Rangers. So right. Rangers got a wee stroke a lot there that he failed the medical with him because his knees and. Then he went to Ibrox and the same with yourself. Then just took a chance. Aye, well, Graham soon as it. Waller tells me the same story. You know, you sure about you know taking taking them with all these and how long he'll last and stuff like that. But uh, he just fought his way through it, kept himself in good shape, kept all his uh, you know doing all his quads exercises and stuff like that to keep his knees as 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 well as he could, and would play through. Well, the last game of the season, Aye. you know, the last game of the season where he ruptured his Achilles. And he knew that, and that was going to hurt Marcy, didn't Aye. he? because he'd had injections and that before the game. Aye. And I can remember that game because, that, well, that was my second game. You'll probably come at my first game. <laughs> but my, that was my second game uh, at Ibrox. And um, I took him down maybe 10 o'clock in the morning and he's in the bath. And I'm saying, what the hell's that bloody racket? coming out of the bath. So they used to have the baths in the, in the dressing room. I mean, we were in the away dressing room then because the home dressing room was getting, and the other, other ones, uh, well, Aberdeen, they were in porta cabins and stuff like that. So I'm hearing this shouting going on in, in the bath. I'm saying, what the hell's going on there? So I pop, pop my head in, and here's Bomber. Come on, Rangers, let's get right into them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is 10 o'clock in the morning, you know. <laughs> Five hours to kick off. That sounds like you stand. Archie, right, so you go to Manchester United mm -hmm. under Sir Alex Ferguson. Then the call comes to Rangers from Walter. Was that a hard decision for you? Aye, that was an extremely hard decision because um, it was it was one of these things. Man United were in the final of the Cup Winners' Cup against mm -hmm. Barcelona and Rotterdam the following week for when I came to Rangers. And of course, you know, it's one of these things. And when you've got a wife and two kids and mortgages and all the rest of it, and it just came down to simply the Rangers were paying me a lot better than what Manchester United was. And Alec tried to fix that, but uh, it didn't happen. And I'd promised Walter that I was going anyway. So, but anyway, I'm, I'm back on speaking terms to Alec after all these years. Well, I still spoke to him last week again, you know, so... Oh, that's no bad <laughs> that's after about 20 years. Aye, after about 20 <laughs> odd years. Not... No, no, no. It's just, he, he at the time, it, the timing was absolutely terrible. The, right. time, the timing was terrible. And I bet after the first game at Motherwell, then Walter thought, what have I done? You know, we get beat 3-0. Yeah, well, I know and, you told the story, uh, 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 mother after the game when you went back to Ibrox the first oh, time. Oh God, I when uh, my, my well my first day in at Ibrox, they're putting the top deck on the stand and that sort of stuff, and all the guys are uh, working away there, and um, I'm walking uh, walking along, and shutter and joiners are, are there, and I was a joiner to trade myself. So I said, hi, morning boys, how you's getting on? And this boy shouts, hi Knox, you've made a big bloody difference, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, what have I done here? <laughs> How did you find it at Rangers? How did you find oh, it? Oh, absolutely great. So you're glad you made the decision? Well, oh, well, I mean, it turned out, turned out great for me, you know. Then, uh, And, of course, 
that Man United went on to do better things when I left anyway. So <laughs> I always found that in my career, you know, that the safest thing to do was get on the move uh, when they're starting to find you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> As I did on many, many occasions. <laughs> but no, no. Uh, well, I knew Walter, um, you know, played with him at Dundee United, was pals with him at the coaching courses down at large and that. So I knew Walter uh, for years and years before. I became associated with that. In fact, in the cup final with Dundee United um, against Celtic, I don't mention anything about the game or anything like that, but Jim McLean, his midfield that day was Walter Smith, no, myself, Walter Smith and Paddy Garner. And he used to call us the Three Stooges, Curly, Larry and Mo. That was our names. That was our names. But that, that was football. I mean, it was... Uh, Ah, it was a it was a tough tough decision to make. When you when you've but no made... regrets about you, you once these things are done, you know, and I've had a lot of decisions like that, then you got on with it. There's no point in saying, Oh well, oh god, I wish I hadn't done that or hadn't no, done that. You just no. knuckle down and go on with it. And you you must have met some amount of characters at Rangers. I mean, start they start with right away. You've got Coisty and Mead, your aunt, and a bit, a bit of the jokers in the dressing room and, and things like that. But what about Andy Dibble? Oh, God <laughs> almighty. Andy Dibble, when the goalie was injured, right? And yeah. Colin Scott was a reserve goalie and he was injured as well. So we're sitting one afternoon uh, with Rothman's book out, <laughs> looking through, looking through uh, goalkeepers at different clubs, look through goalkeepers at every club in, in flipping England, you know. And Walter's got, he's taking the needle, he's saying to me, he says, you worked in England for years and years. He says, you must bloody know a goalie. I says, well, the only one I can come up with is Andy Dibble, who's a reserve goalie at Man City. He says, well, you need to try and get on to them and see if we, if we can get them. And therefore, that's how Andy Dibble came to, came to Rangers. And I can remember his first day at training uh, up at the West of Scotland cricket ground. And um, we're jogging round and Alan Hodgkinson's taking Andy Dibble for the, the bit of the goalkeeping training and stuff like that. So McCoy and Durant are just behind me and are jogging round. And within two or three minutes, the net is full of balls, right? <laughs> He's no save one. And McCoy and Durant says, he can't play on Saturday. We're playing Celtic on Saturday. He can't play. I said, well, nobody else. And McCoy says, I can go in the goal. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I played in the goal before at school and stuff like that. He says, I'm, I'm a good goalie. You know, <laughs> typical McCoy. I'm, I'm a good goalie. I can definitely go in the goal. I said, I ah, fair enough. You could go in the goal right enough. But Dibble went, went in the goal and had a, a remarkable game that Oh, day. he was outstanding. He had a, a, one, a special save for, for De Canio. It was uh, out of this world. And he, of course... A great goalie. And then, of course, we went to, was it Toronto we went in the... In the, the season. Pre, no, in the close season, close just season after now. the season was over. Went to supporters thing over there in Toronto. And uh, the boys were, the kid on sort of stuff. <clears throat> let's, let's all get, let's all get tattoos. You know, nine in a <laughs> row tattoos and that. And uh, Andy Double says, I can get one of them as well. And uh, he says, hey, you get one of them. He says, well, I played nine games. <laughs> <laughs> I played nine games for Rangers. He says, uh, it'd be great. And the boys are, uh, what do you call it, saying, hi, on you go and double. So double got a nine, nine in a row tattoo, you know. But were, it was these ones that you could get ready, you know. They, were, they weren't there permanently or anything like that. You, you could actually get rid of them. So Andy Dibble. And I remember going to Walter at the end of the season after we came back and uh, he said to Walter, he said, uh, Walter, is there any chance, right, you could give me another year at Rangers? He says, I'll play for nothing. He says, I, I just want to be associated with all these boys in the club and stuff like that. And if well, if you can give me, he says, you didn't need to pay me or anything like that. And Hank Walter says to him, no, we've had enough of you, devil, <laughs> on your bike. <laughs> but see, but he was a great lad. I, I, I see what you were talking about with the tattoos. If I remember, we Durant tell me that the Durant no shout through 
get 1690 on your arm with the, the, the nine in a row. And he went, what's that for? And we did that and said, that's when the club was founded. He goes, aye, I'll get 1690 on it and on. And then they had to tell him, didn't they? Oh, no, no, no. I, didn't, I didn't want to mention that. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of questions come up, Stan, that I've just All seen right. there, right? So um, Abby Thorne has asked Archie, would yourself and Walter allow others to pick your players? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that would be the case at all. In actual fact, after uh, the nine in a row, remember they, they came back from Tynecastle, the helicopter and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Aye. Was Hibs. That, oh, Hibs. That's, Hibs. Hibs. that's right, sorry. Well, I wouldn't have known anyway because that day I was away... I think it was in Italy, uh, looking at another player. So I wasn't involved in any of the celebrations that day. Wasn't it I'm Marco Negri, was it? Eh? Was it Marco Negri? No, but I can tell you Marco's story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't it? it wasn't it Marco. I can't, I can't remember who it was. Um, but, you know, it was the only chance to go and see this guy. We were th thinking about maybe sort of uh, having a go for this chap, but... Uh, so I didn't get involved in any any of the celebrations. Mind you, you know, I didn't deserve it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bim, oh God, how do I say that last Bim name? Yes, right. So he's asking, what was it like to work with a Rangers legend that is Walter? And what's your favourite Rangers memory working alongside him? Oh, well, we've only got 50 minutes here. <laughs> I mean, it would take all day to sort of, you know, then to break that down. To go, to go, to go through through them all you know but uh had some fantastic times you, you mean you mentioned marco and Egri there archie but mind you tell us about the, the five land game with your sail with him at half time aye aye the, the dundee united game aye. if this is, answers the guy's question or something like that then i remember he'd scored a hat-trick in the first half uh against dundee united and he come in at half time and uh, uh, Walter was great because, you know, if I had a bee in my bonnet about something, if I went in the dressing room and I was first in the dressing room, I would just, whatever I was saying, I, I was saying he would just let me get on with it. So anyway, this day, uh, come in and um, we're up, up three nothing, you know, cruising. But anyway, I decided I would attack Marco for no running into channels. So I says, Marco, for Christ's sake, Marco, I says, when I left, David Robertson gets the ball and Mikhail Chenko's marked, Stuart McCall's maybe marked, they've no got, they can't pass it in there. So I says, you've got to run in a channel now and again in behind the, their defence. So as we've got a, an out ball and we can get up the pitch that bit. And Marco kind of pauses and looks at me and says, Archie, you come and watch me play? I says, yes, of course I came and watched you play. He says, well, you must know. I know do that. <laughs> I says, well, fair enough, Mark. We'll just, just keep belting them in the goal and that, that'll do me. <laughs> hey, we only scored five today, didn't we? <laughs> he scored the five, aye. Oh. Unbelievable. Aye. What a great lad. <laughs> um, I was going to read out one of the other questions there, but I'll leave that for a wee bit later because somebody's answered the, the one of the questions, All right. right? But we'll announce that a wee bit later on. I think it's Tommy. All right, I'll we'll leave uh, that one we'll leave in. That one. Right, um, get the rest to get the answers in. Actually, uh, my husband asked me to ask you this, right? Um, can you tell us about Gaza and the cup final against Hearts and what he'd done? And then he managed to score the two goals in the second half. Aye. Oh, there was always something wrong with Gascoigne, you know. <laughs> you know the one thing about Gascoigne that people don't know, they've heard stories and all the rest of it, but he would sit in the dressing room and Walter would be naming the team, and everybody would be in their club suit and all the rest of it. And Paul Gascoigne would be sitting there trembling in case he wasn't playing, nervous that he wasn't that he might not be playing. So when Walter would name the team and he would go Trevor Stephen, Paul Gascoigne, that would be him. The jacket would come off down to his waist, shirt the tie off, the shirt down at the waist, the trousers down at his ankles, right? Sometimes he never wore underpants. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shoes and socks would be kicked off the, the whole lot. And Walter would say to him, Hey, you. He says, Is there any chance that you could listen to one word we are saying here? And uh, I am listening, Gaffer. I'm listening. 
But that was him. He was nervous in case he wouldn't be playing, which was, you know, Aye, he'd be the first, going to first name, that. first name in the team sheet every every week, more or less. I m- remember you telling us uh, the other cup final when he, he turned up and he didn't oh, have his suit. Aye. Oh God, I, I Jimmy <laughs> Bell came. God rest him. Uh, Jimmy Bell came to me um, because we stayed at the hotel and then went back to Ibrox have a pre-match meal there, get ready there. Walter would do his team talking out there, name the team, the whole lot. And um, where, where Jimmy Bell comes to me, he says, uh, have, you, have you got any spare clothes in your in your uh, locker? I says, aye, but what, what do you want spare clothes for? He says, Gascoigne's forgot his suit. <laughs> I says, what? He says, he forgot his suit. I said, well, what has he done? He says, he's left it at him. I said, well, you got a suit? And Jimmy says, I've got a suit, but it'd be far too big for him. I mean, there's no way that he's it'd be far too big. I says, but I've got shoes and socks, underpants, shirt, tie, the whole lot. I says, well, I says, and I've got a belt. I says, well, you'll need to put that on. So he puts all the gear on. And then he puts this suit on. You might have seen this. It's overlapped the way across here, the jacket, right? The trousers are far too long. Uh, the belts, it's low overlapped here. So we're on the bus and that, and I say to him, look, see when we get off the bus here, and the press will be there, and TV, and they'll be wanting a word with you, guaranteed they'll be wanting a word with you about the game and all the rest of it. I says, I've told Richard Goff, right? He'll go off the bus first. You'll be off next, and John Brian will be behind you, right? And the three is I'll frog march your way into Hamden Park because you didn't go down in the tunnel in these days. You know, you were just parked outside, went up the steps and and the dressing room. So sure enough, good as gold. The boys <laughs> see if you've seen it. See if they caught that on camera. You know, the three of them frog marching their way into the dressing room. Him with us. Tripping over his trousers, the length and all the rest of it. <laughs> so anyway, we get in the dressing room, and I go into the dressing room, and I says, "Where's Gascoigne?" And somebody says, "He's out in the park." I says, "With that gear on, with that suit that on, aye." So I go out and I said, "There he is." And the commentator that day was Jock Brown, and Jock Brown's statement and on in commentary that day was. And there's Paul Gascoigne playing with it. He was in the center circle playing with the ball boys, you know, and they're having a kick about in the, with the ball boys and stuff like that. And he, there's Paul Gascoigne. He says, These guys will remember, these boys will remember that for the rest of their lives, having a kick about in the cup final before uh, with Paul Gascoigne. And there he is in his 400 pound Gucci shoes <laughs> and his 500 pound. <laughs> Whatever boss suit and all the rest of it, you know. <laughs> and that was Joe Brown summing up with Gascoigne, you know. Absolutely incredible. Oh, brilliant. Another another one, and I love asking you this any time we do Q and A is when any of the Rangers clubs is Andy Dibble when he came over, his dog. Uh, what one was that? Again? Oh no, Andy Dibble, sorry. Bo Eric Bo Anders. Oh, Eric Bo. Eric Bo. Eric Bo. Bo. Oh, he was a lovely lad as well. And uh, I can remember his first day at training. And he was a quiet, quiet lad, you know. Wouldn't he say much or anything like that. But anyway, as as well on you then, he, I mean, he wasn't brilliant on the ball or anything like that. But after the training, Gascoigne comes to me and he says, you sign him. <laughs> and I said, Walter. <laughs> and he says, he says, well, is that, is that, have you seen him play? I says, no. I had, I had seen him play. But uh, I says, no, I have not seen him play. He says, well, I hope he was bloody nervous. He, says, he couldn't have control a bag of cement. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was him with, with, with Eric Bo, you know. And, uh, of course, Eric Bo went on to score the, the goals goal. the goals against the uh, uh, was it Celtic guy. The two it was Celtic guy. Aye. 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 But he did well, and he had. He used to come to me with all his problems, Eric. You know, he's now a counselor over in uh, where he where he came from and stuff like that. And a, and a lovely lad. So he came to me one day at training. and He says, uh, "Archie, can I have tomorrow morning off?" I says, 
I go train in the morning, Eric. You know we train in the morning. He says, I know, but my dog has been in quarantine for three months. And I promised my dog yesterday I would pick him up at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> I says, you're having a laugh, Eric, aren't you? He says, no. I says, you're kidding me on. He says, no, I, uh, can I go and get my dog? I says, ah, on you bloody go. Yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> go away and get your dog, you know. It's, so he went away and got the dog and then come in after that. I mean, incredible. And then there was another time he came to me and he said, uh, actually, I have problems with my next door neighbour. I said, people have two problems. I, I get problems with my next door neighbour. <laughs> You know, no football stuff. You know, I, I wasn't there for the football. I was only there to tell the story. So. And he, he said, I said, I what is it, Eric? He says, well, my next door neighbour, there is no fence between our gardens. So sometimes when my dog comes out, it goes next door and it has a poo in his garden and a pee in his garden. And my neighbour goes off his head and he starts swearing at my dog and throwing stones at my dog. He says, it could, he could hurt my dog. He says, he must understand. I have only been, my dog has only been three months in Scotland. It does not understand the language yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was there. <laughs> where, is, where is he counselling? <laughs> <laughs> He's maybe getting counselling. Um, uh, Alex Kelly's asking, actually, um, with the passing of Jimmy Bale, um, does actually think our current dressing room is missing a Scottish voice and standards are being kept, as in Rangers standards? Well, I don't know anything about that because I'm not aware, but they'll be missing Jimmy Bell. There is no question about that. I mean, Jimmy Bell was absolutely phenomenal for everything he did. I mean, he came, first of all, as a bus driver That's for right, Parts yeah. Hamilton. And it was Graeme Souness that got him as a, as, as a kit man. And he, he did everything, Jimmy. And he was, he, he was on his own. I mean, he, he worked on his own. He didn't have any helpers. I don't know how many people will have working about the place now. But it's like all the clubs now. I mean, they have uh, unbelievable uh, amount of people. And the backroom staff. And the backroom yeah. staff. Well, my pal works with Klopp at Liverpool, so I went over to see him uh, on the Tuesday night before the game. And uh, they, they were in the Mar Hall Hotel took over the whole of the Mar Hall Hotel. They had 37 staff with them, six masseurs, but 37 non-playing staff. I uh, think they put them on the part the way we played. I think they put 37 <laughs> of them on the part. But, but it just shows you that <coughs> Jimmy Bell worked in, worked in his own, you know, and, and did, ever, did absolutely everything. I mean, I've done a, a gig in Edward Bowling Club in uh, Saturday night with Bomber and uh, Big Marvin and, and Bomber was telling the story. You'd have been there, Archie. They used to go away uh, and then overnight or two nights before a cup final. And Jimmy Bell, he's talking about Jimmy and he said, what Jimmy used to do, get are in all the, all the hotel rooms and chat the door. And like say, Bomber was with Ian Ferguson, you Trevor Stephen, with Gary Stephen, you'd Coiste and Durant together, and Mo Johnson was sharing with Coiste. She said, Chaps the door, and they used to get a, either a Mars bar or a mm -hmm. sticker or a, a flake or something like You get two balls of chocolate each. So he chapped the door, and he says, Ali, what you want? He <clears throat> said, uh, Can I get a, a flake and a, a snicker? And they went, In fact, could I, could I get one each? And they went, You're a Ranger super striker. You can get one each, anything if you want. She so just scored all the goals for us. You can get them. She so gave them four. Me Mo went, can I get four? I said, listen, you, you be be drill at work. <laughs> see, if you don't score, see if you don't score against Celtic, you'll be getting nothing. He said, they just went away. He said, they just, they said, they just me Mo and Josh just looked as if they said, was he kidding on? Really? Was he kidding on, didn't he? Just, I, well, I think, I think he, uh, I think he, what do you call it, um, with with Morris and that, even for even for Kit, you know they would get the kit and stuff like that, and they, he'd have kit at their place and uh, stuff like that. They wouldn't have any kit at most places. What the code guy I mean, think I think that's maybe answered that guy's question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, uh, 
That's right. The goalies boy there, Danny, writing in there. Eh? Oh, aye. Great to listen to Archie's story as you come to Blackpool on the 19th. I think we got a good experience the last time in Blackpool, Archie. Oh, God, aye. Aye. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else should we go? Alec Kelly, what's that one? I think we've done that one. Uh, Chris Stewart, can I start you as his favourite Rangers player while he was at the club? Oh, that'd be a hard one for you. Oh, right? Impossible. Impossible. I mean, the one thing about it, right, then uh, it, it was amazing how everybody was accepted, all the foreign players and stuff like that came in. And I can remember, I can remember the the Italians especially, you know, then uh, Rangers, uh, on, all my time at Rangers anyway, you had to come in with your... Uh, Collar and tie every morning, you know, properly, no suited up, but your jacket and collar and tie and stuff like that. And they they couldn't believe this, but there was not one of them sort of, you know, said, "I'm not wearing a collar and tie. I'll just come in with jeans as I do at my former club or anything like that." No, they all came in and the boys made them, you know, stick by that. And there was not, there was never a, never a problem. The only problem we had was with uh, Ian Ferguson once with Amaruso. When Amaruso came in and uh, and uh, Fergie came to me, he says, I, Amaruso, he says, but see that thing around his neck? Fergie says, he says, he'll need to get rid of that. I says, <laughs> what are you talking about? He says, that thing around his neck. I says, put, I says, Fergie, he's a teammate of ours now. Right, <laughs> he can wear whatever he wants. There's no any problem with with that. And uh, oh no no no, he says, "Are you going to have a word with him?" I says, "I'm definitely not having a word with him." Right. <laughs> so he says, "Right, you have a word with him when he come when he come back for the training." I says, "No, I'm not having a word." Anyway, we we'll go away training, come back, and uh, Fergie calls me again. Are you having a word with Amo? No. He said, well, I need to have a word with him, right? I said, well, please yourself, it's up to you. So he goes away over and uh, he puts his arm around Amaru, so and that he says, Amo, he says, uh, great to have you on board. He says, you'll do great for us. I mean, you're a top player, Italian internationalist, the whole lot. You'll fit in great here. He says, the only one thing I would ask of you, Amo, is see the morning, morning and that. Can you leave the water key at him? <laughs> <laughs> and Amaruso goes, water key? What the what is a water what, what is a water key? <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know if you can can you put these things out or just go <laughs> live or anything. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I didn't want to get to jail. <laughs> uh, actually, can you tell our viewers um about Walter's interview with Chick Young. Oh, <laughs> now I did watch this this afternoon, and I was absolutely—I have seen it before, but just sitting myself watching a wee, I was buckled, absolutely buckled. Oh, God, I haven't up. seen. I well, we'd lost three games in a row, you know. Have you never? Have it's you never on seen YouTube. The video? It's I have seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it, but. Uh, I mean, apparently, it's a bestseller. Everybody, oh, oh. <laughs> anywhere you go, that's the first question they ask you about Chick Young. You know. Did you shove that mic right nah, up his? <laughs> give me a hold of that mic and I'll know where to put it. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> but he, he, tried to, he tried to start the interview about three times and Walter Aye. just was, you seen it? Aye. And Walter just was in the oven. And went, no. and he, you're telling me Gaza and Loudrop can he play for? Uh-huh. No, well, that's what you're telling me. That's what uh, uh, I'm not following your line of questioning here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often you've seen Walter get like that when anybody knows exactly. what's snapping. Uh, you tell me Basil Bolly can he play in Europe? I know. I know. <laughs> he's just, he he's one of your being He scored the winner. He scored the winner. Uh-huh. And, and, and not only that, Lauder had played seven games for Bayern uh-huh. uh, in, the, in the Champions League that year as well. Oh, oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Great. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was well done. <laughs> but, uh, we'll go a wee, we'll go and do the uh, up and coming events that we've got. Uh, I did, I, two good ones at the weekend there. I had the. Uh, Irvin Bowling Club on Friday night, and I'm not kidding. You know, the way you hear this, I'm, I'm at the game on Wednesday night. I speak to wee Alec McDonald, wee Doddy. <coughs> she says, you're all right for Wednesday, eh, for Friday. I said, I am all right. I said, good. 
So on their phone on the Thursday night, I said, what do you want picked up? He says, get me at the Kirk and Tillett Rangers Club. I says, right, me and Derek Ferguson will pick you up about quarter past six. So he drives into Kirk and Tillett, and I says, to be fair, I said, I think the Rangers Club's down there, but we drove by it. I says, we'll go up and we'll turn. So see when we're turning, me Doddy's walking up the street, and he goes, oh, there he's there. So we stopped him out, and I'm waving at him. And he goes, and waves back. Walks on. on. <laughs> and I goes, Doddy. And I rolls the window down, and he goes, where are you going? I said, I'm here to keep you. <laughs> what for? I said, we're going to Irvine Bowling Club. We're doing a gig tonight. He went, oh, I thought it was tomorrow night. I was going up to my daughter's for dinner. <laughs> Wait, he grab him, swing him in the motor. So next thing he phoned his daughter, and he's like, I've been kidnapped here. We <laughs> um, start, he got to Irvine. Honestly, and then we done uh, Edward Bowling Club and the Saturday night, the Edward uh, Rangers Supporters Club, fantastic night with Bomber and uh, Big Marvin and the usual Marvin gave us a wee song. Oh, did he? Aye, aye, so uh, brilliant. And we've got Blackpool, are you looking forward to I'm that? looking forward to Blackpool on the 19th. Yep. 19th, you can do it, Gary? Not in your life. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. No, no. Are you getting anything else coming up? No, Blackpool's my big one. Um, obviously, I did put a wee thing on the other night about semi retiring. Um, I just, I need, to, it's not really the singing I need a break for, it's the commitment to every Saturday night. So there will be a few that I'll probably do here and there as it, as it, you know, as I suit myself, but I just don't want the commitment that far in advance. Look after the voice. No, nah, it's not even that because you know anywhere I go, I end up picking a mic up anyway. I just I can't I can't <laughs> throw the mic away completely. I know that I won't be able to do that. Do you know what I mean? I've done it for too long. And that's been I think that's been twenty seven <laughs> years or something like that. 20, yeah, if I was fourteen, so I've done it for that long. So <laughs> I just need a wee bit of family time. You know, weekends free my weekends up a wee bit, and but I will I will do the odd one here and there. But I'm looking forward to Blackpool as I say. Benidorm was a great one for me to be part of just because it was in the Benidorm Palace and the venue was absolutely fantastic and it was definitely one of the highlights in my career singing in in Ah, there. I booked her. I you know. (laughs) Um, I'll go there. I'll book I'm going next year. It was fantastic. Next year, yeah. Mm -hmm. September weekend next year. Aye. Got a few of the but we Durant's gone. Is he? Oh and that aye so that'll be another good one. Yeah. But as I say, no, I just I just need a wee bit of family time. But it was good it was good to end this year between Bedroom and now Blackpool's another big gig that I absolutely love doing. I've done that every so year now. Special appearances. I thought well it'll just be like maybe be local events like even yourself stand, do you know what I mean? Like right. um just local, maybe <clears throat> last minute things that are, you know, or one big ones that maybe feel that I deserve to do the big ones, do you know what I mean? After 26, 27 years of doing this. Ooh. So that's it, really, I uh, And I'm just as I remember, we've got one. There's one in Friday night with Mark Cately <coughs> and Bobby Tate and White and Sean's club for Andrew Reid. That'll be a good one. <coughs> it's a good, good club. It's a good set up to. Uh, so that'll, that'll be a good night. Uh, back well, to back to football, Gary. <coughs> what did you think on Sunday, Rangers? On Sunday, um, personally, I thought it was a really poor game. I thought Motherwell were really poor. We start with Mullerwell. I know we're going to talk about Rangers at great length, but I thought, <coughs> just as a spectacle, I thought Mullerwell were really poor. And I think we were actually quite lucky that we got Mullerwell at the weekend because I think if we get someone else, I think we could have lost that game. We've been, they've, they've been playing well to, up to <coughs> Sunday. I think Mullerwell right. were playing no bad, aye. They were a bit, a bit toothless. But I right. thought that, that probably helped us. Um, and I know we're all starting to analyse every individual player. But I think, for me, the most most obvious thing is we're just totally lacking in confidence. No. Do Archie will know better than me is that confidence and, and, and belief. But for me, there's, there's, there's no, a lacking it, in both. It was always going to be a hard one to come back for after midweek, wasn't it? It yeah. was always going to be a hard one to come back for. Aye. And it <coughs> I wasn't be- looking forward to it on Sunday because when you get a drip, well, you should know, Archie, getting, there, a, right? getting, a, getting a big doing like that, it's, it's a hard one. To, it really is. But yeah. we did lose... Well, it, maybe that just actually shows you how good Connor Goldson actually really is. Because when he went came off, we went right down. That yep. was it after that. So, I mean, I know he gets a lot of stick at times, Connor. Um, but I think that proves to a lot of people that how good he maybe really is, you know. But do you know, I think when they came off, do you know, I think Jack as well. When we, when we lose, I go with my head's good. And and at Archie's time, but going through nine in a row, when we were getting beat one nothing or even two nothing. We believed that the team was going to come back. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. He had the winners there. But, I mean, we, were, we, spoke, I mean, we spoke about it in the pub the other week there, and he hit it in the head. He, they're playing Liverpool there, right? And we get a doing. I don't think we get a player booked. We didn't. I don't think we're one Rangers player booked. We didn't have a player I mean, booked against Ajax either. No, but, but see, see a game like that, if, when you're, you, you've got to get in about them. Right. Uh, you can't let a team like that play, can you? Just well, we saw what happened. They destroyed us. Aye. Just let them play. <clears throat> it's difficult because, I mean, the comparison between the clubs, you know, know that long ago, yeah, well, if you take it back to Walters period and stuff like that, then you could hang in in a lot, a lot of these sort of games. But now the comparison with the players that are available for Liverpool to sign or, or Man City to sign and Rangers can sign, it's night and day. Oh, you just, and you, you can't can do it. it. The money. You look at the bench. The money they brought dictates everything. The money dictates everything now. Look at look at the bench they brought. So on. no matter That's no matter it. what manager <laughs> you've got or anything like that, they can only go with what they've got available to them. Oh, I remember. Well, you you remember us too, Bomber telling us when you played Ajax a long while back, and, and yourself and and Walter sent Bomber out to watch Ajax. <laughs> Well, you remember the, the team in that? Oh, had that unbelievable. Time and and well. Bomber gets through the team. Blunt. Seedorf and Clive. Seedorf, Aye, Clive, yeah. uh, Rijkaard, uh, the two De Boers, and, and he names the team. And you asked them for a report, and they come back, and they went, I've got three words, uh, two words. And he says, what? He says, we're pumped. They were late when I would. He said, and see that game, see if you remember the game. We, Charlie, was on a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about it. And the big go off no gaff injured. Can't he mind? No, he didn't. No, see, he, he see did, all no. these games. I forget about them quickly. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what he did I wasn't say, involved in them. <laughs> no, who it was? It was Gaza get sent off. Ah, that's right. It because was. what he was talking about was Gaza get sent off, and Craig Moore was playing. And Big Goffy kept saying, "Oh, you're on your own." He said, "Then the b boy, boy Bogart got uh, Gaza uh, sent off." And the, the, the who was it when they had up front? He was a speed merchant aye. and he just kept running by. Craig, Craig Moore was quite fast. So aye. And uh, he said that when they went back to the dressing room at half time, you came into the dressing room and Gaza was hiding in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you love it, right? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the more I the Gary, do you think we'll, I think we'll rest a, a few and use, use some of the. I don't well, know. Some of the younger, do you think? I, I like say, I see. Delighted you asked me. I was. I would have preferred your Archie's answer on that <laughs> because I don't know if you can rest a team that's lacking in confidence. I think you've got to try and play a more settled side and try and build the confidence and yeah. no, the belief. I, if the papers are right, I've seen a wee bit in the papers. They're saying that they're going to be roof a few minutes, and the boy Lowry is he still playing for us, aye. <laughs> 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 And the boy Lowry he was getting some game time for the the, the, the youth team today. Oh, really? And they might get introduced for a wee while more if he, if he shows up all right. So but the one yeah. thing about picking a Rangers team in that, you've got to win. No, I know. I mean, you I can't know. afford to just pick a team that you say, well, these lads have no had a game and uh, playing Dundee and in the different div- division and that sort of stuff. You've got to win that game. Aye. No, irrespective, you know, then, I think and, 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 and it's a cup that, well, all, well, all the, all the, the what do you call it, uh, whatever's up for grabs, the uh, Scottish Cup, the League Cup, the, the League, I mean, Rangers have got to be challenging for every one of them. No, no, I agree, just one. I agree with you. You know, so you, you've got to take that into account and say, right, have I got enough, know enough about Dundee and should have enough, and okay, then, Confidence will no be its best at this particular time. But when some young players go into the game, into these sort of games, then they can show themselves because they've nothing to lose. They've not been involved no, in it or anything like that. They're, <coughs> they're desperate to show what they're capable of doing. And uh, if you take, going back to earlier, when you, when you had people like uh, Charlie Miller and that going in and uh, even Greg Shields and... Uh, you know, there are quite a few younger ones go into games and even in European games and do quite well. But they were surrounded with top top players, you know, international aye, yeah. international players. Who were probably playing well. Aye, exactly. So you can afford to drop in a couple of younger guys Correct. and get the experience. The team's on and up. Yeah. But at the moment, it feels as if we're, we're kind of here. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Risk. I agree. Too many changes. Hmm. And, of course, the crowd's a big 
thing as well. The crowd's a massive thing, you know, because, you know, when uh, they're not doing so well, they'll jump on everything. Yeah. You know, they'll give it the, they'll get the best supporters in the world and that. But when it's not going so well, then it can no, be difficult. You can, you can see that. You can, even at the game, can you, you, yeah. you can, we can see the new creep man a wee bit. Feel it, we're demanding, yeah. aren't we? We're very demanding. A big thing I noticed on Sunday, I'm, I went down to the pub to watch a game down to my pub on Sunday, and uh, that's the quietest I've ever seen the pub for a game. Is that right? Aye, right, honestly. Uh, don't get me wrong, the 52 seater in for Peter he the four of the game, I thought maybe they went away the game. But uh, I, I say all the prices up there, or no, I set all the tables out for everybody coming in, and, and I had a wee look about, and I went, that, That's the, the quietest I've. I've I've seen it and it just shows you that wee bit of dip there the people on there is as keen and, and getting out and watching it. And then they like kick off at twelve and all, but even sometimes when it is a twelve o'clock kick off, I still got a good turn, but I just you didn't feel you didn't feel it we were getting this no. getting the crowd in. But the thing is as well, there's <clears> that much football on TV and stuff like that, and you're seeing a game like Liverpool and Man City. <clears> now, no matter Rangers supporters are great supporters and stuff. But they see a game like that, they say, why are we no playing like that? Mm. You know? Right. I'm and not talking about that game. <laughs> rea- realistically, <laughs> realistically, it's, it's no possible. No. No, I know and it's the, not. The, the money is at stake is, is, is phenomenal. phenomenal. No, I agree, 100%. Do you, do you think we should have invested mm. there a wee bit more at the start of the season when we qualified for the Champions League? I think that's very obvious now, isn't it? Yeah, I agree very with you 100%. Obvious. I mean, if you look, if you look at the Liverpool game, I think we started with two out of seven signings at the start of the season. We only started with two players out of seven. Aye. And no, the, if, you know, you know my feelings on the transfer policy. Aye, <laughs> it's not working. No, 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 it's, it's not the bottom line. We, we see we're taking too many risks. Aye, I think that's that's my and, view. And that hard chase, hot it in the heat earlier on. There, he was talking about guys like Charlie Muller and all them coming through when you were there. We don't Aye, seem Neil to, Wilson. And, no, yeah. we, we don't seem to be. I Neil mean, Murray. They, they all played yeah. in European games. Greg Shields. God, Aye. Aye. Uh, God rest him. Davy Hagen and people Aye. like that. And Gary, uh, Gary McSwigan. I was going to say yeah. McSwigan. Uh, sticks my mind. But yeah. it's, it's not only Rangers. I mean, if you look at all, if you look at all the, the, the teams, right, and the number of young Scottish players that are coming through in the teams, there are very few. And the biggest problem with the whole lot of that is that, you know, they can sign their contracts and their agents can have them signing their contracts for a period of time. And whenever they show anything, they can go until they come at a certain age, I think it is now. They, they can go um, when they're out of contract for a, a compensation fee. It's cross-border, isn't ah, it? It's just a small cross-border yeah. fee, which we benefited from as well. Absolutely. <coughs> some players. But Absolutely, you're, you're right. We were bringing the better Scottish guys up, like Billy Gilmer, for example. I mean, he was going to be a phenomenal player. We all knew that from a very young age. Go on, I, I was a wee bit, I was a wee bit surprised. I was a wee bit surprised. Maybe they did. Maybe they, they, they tried to get him back on on loan or, or, or whatever. Because they were I, talking I think, about it. Weren't I, they, think, I think I uh, think you know uh, that lad had a dip in his career so far. Yeah. So it's up to him now. You know. Being at uh, Brighton, that he's got to kick on and show people that he's capable of being in that team, and well, then it, hopefully he <coughs> will do. I was just saying, remember we John Fleck. Aye, exactly. I mean, he was at run about Barry Gilmer's age. He was, he was at the big, he was the big name that yeah, was going to prospect. That was going to be outstanding. You know, I mean, when you look back, I mean, you've got to look away back to. Maybe Barry Ferguson, before we had a real, a real superstar come through with Academy. Well, see all that. People come to you and say, and schools football <laughs> and youth team football and stuff like that. And my entire life in football, at 14 years of age, you know, and we we had uh, schools and Butt and Beckham and the Neville brothers and uh, Giggs and exactly. all these. I've only ever seen two players in all my time in football at 14, you would have bet them being a first team. Is that player. right? Aye. And the first, the, the, the first one was Giggs at Man United, and then the second one was Rooney at uh, Everton. And Walter tried to get Rooney uh, 
Rooney used to get time off school three days a week, three mornings a week. He used to get off school. Uh, I don't know how the headmaster managed it, but he came in and trained with the, the first team at Everton. And he would have been capable of going on the pitch. In actual fact, we tried to do that. We tried to get him that we could use him as a sub, but we weren't allowed to use him as a sub. Schools wouldn't, have, wouldn't oh, yeah. allow that and stuff like that. What? But there was loads of the there was loads of these loads of these players. And they too kind of stood out then at that age. Oh, oh, uh, fourteen year old. Now, absolutely. if you're looking at the Neville brothers, Paul <clears throat> Schools, you know, Gig, well, Giggs, Giggs, Giggs was one. Beckham was one that you know. Um, Beckham, I used to go and watch Beckham when we were down in London at Chelsea or Tottenham or Arsenal or wherever. And the scout used to pick me up and I used to go and watch Beckham play. And he was a tiny wee goat boy at that time, you know, at 13, 14. And uh, you would have never have said he would have turned out to be the player he, he, was. he was. I mean, he was a wee dribbler, but he, he, that wasn't his game when he played. It was all about passing and crossing and th that sort of stuff. I, I actually thought you'd have said Charlie Miller there because I know Bomber and... and oh, uh, Charlie Miller. And he, he said that. That was the best day I'd ever seen it. I mean, we Durant says that still. He says he was the best player I've ever seen at 16, the worst at 18. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Charlie Miller. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Aye, Charlie Miller was was one, well, when I came to Rangers then, he was hovering about and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been, it wasn't long before uh, Walter was introducing him into yeah. the first team squad. My pal Neil Ingle, who was a keeper. Oh, My Neil, aye. Neil, big Neil told me a great story about Charlie Miller in the Amsterdam tournament. Oh, aye. I, th I can't remember if he get player of the tournament. I think he was he was obviously <coughs> very highly rated at that age. And Neil tells the story that Seedorf and Clive and these who turned out to be Dutch superstars at the end of that tournament were trying to get Charlie's jersey. Is that right? So that's how good he was at that age. <coughs> aye, he was. He was. He, he was. He was. Oh, a bomber said that. And had the temperament for it as well. He, he had everything about him, Charlie. Aye. And he, I, I'd use him for the Legends games and he can still play. He can still put his cell a bit. I mean, you can't be expecting him to play in the first team for new. For no, 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 no. <laughs> and he is doing well with his academies now. He's with academies Aye, and, and that. And he loves it. I haven't done to watch him uh, doing there a few times. I've took my grandson doing that. And, uh, Aye, he's just, doing a good job with all these kids. You Aye, know. He enjoys it. Your grandson was asking if he's had free star. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that a wee while back there. Anyway, we'll be trying to draw this uh, aye, competition aye. then. Um, right, so, you want to read out the question again, Stan? What was who, it? Who the... was the first one there, Ricky? It was, a... who was the first to come in with an answer. <clears throat> it was, uh, who was the first team Archie managed and played for twice? So, Tommy Hans put Forfa. That's correct. First game. And the first game As was against... Rangers assistant, was it Motherwell? It was Motherwell. So Tommy so, has... Tommy, get in contact. Me. Give me a wee message. I know Tommy can... Tommy, I'll get that. I'll get that sorted for you with Stan. And you'll be able to... You and Marlon can go and have a wee night out then in December, a wee Christmas night out. Mar yes. That's actually my best pal's boyfriend, so it is, so... Oh, is it? Aye, right. it's my pal Marlon's And uh, mind, Lindsay so. will be singing and it'll be quite <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Nobody's getting this retirement <laughs> thing, are they? <laughs> <laughs> and, anyway, right folks, that's us coming to the end now So remember, please get involved with our show by subscribing to our YouTube channel Liking our Twitter and Facebook um, And thanks very much for you guys for coming and entertaining our viewers for ah, us brilliant, Archie brilliant. and Gary, thanks so much It's been another uh, enjoyable evening with you all um, Stan and I will see you all in two weeks uh, We'll have more um, legends on the show for you And some of our sponsors We'll let you know in a couple of weeks time The details and the link will also be posted near the time Also thanks to Ricky for getting your questions up On the show tonight Thanks very much for everybody getting involved um, And we'll see you in two weeks time Good night and God bless Good night Good night, Good night.